Hey guys, my name is Kevin. I'm one of the exercise specialists with the West Primary Care Network. And today I'm here to talk to you about exercise and diabetes. So just as a basic overview, essentially type one diabetes is the type of diabetes usually diagnosed earlier in life. Um, it's a problem with the pancreas. It's not producing enough insulin. So basically, um, uh, we need to have supplemental insulin uh, or you need to take supplemental insulin uh, in order to get through your life basically. Type 2 is usually later onset in life. Um, it develops more from insulin resistance. So your body is making insulin but your body is not using it very effectively. So we're going to kind of talk about some considerations and really if you want to treat that via or using exercise instead of using medication or to use exercise to better control your diabetes, then this will be a good uh, video for you. So first of all, I want to get into safety. There's three main points I want to get across. Um, in terms of safety, whether you're type 1, type 2, or gestational diabetes, all of the above apply. So for safety, you should always have your testing kit. So with exercise, especially if you're starting a new exercise plan, you should be testing before and after. Um, I know some people, like, it's difficult if you're exercising regularly, it's a lot of testing. Um, but realistically, especially if you're starting a new plan, you have to test before and after. And then if you do the same workout over and over again, you kind of get a gauge for, um, you know, a 60 minute walk is going to drop your blood sugars by this much, and you see that over and over and over again, then you can get away with testing less often. So always have your kit with you, test before and after. More importantly, if you ever do have a low, or you start to feel symptomatic, that is the time you need to have that kit nearby to be able to test to tell where are your blood sugars. Um, which brings me to number two. If you test and you see that you are low, uh, you have low sugars, then you need to have some food nearby. I have been in the circumstance before where uh, the person didn't have anything and I had to run around the rec center, go find some orange juice or a granola bar, bring it to them, they ate it, and then they felt better. But you should have that. I'm not always gonna be around to run and find your granola bar. So um, always exercise with something, some kind of simple sugar nearby. Granola bars are usually a pretty good option. Um, straight orange juice or straight sugar isn't always, well, isn't usually your best option because it's a really, it'll help you for about 15 minutes, but then you better go have something more substantial that's not just pure sugar. So it can be a quick rescue, but something with more mixed protein and fat is going to actually help you more within the next hour to two and sustain uh, um, your sugars for a little bit longer. Um, 6 to 16 is my general range. So I want you, before an exercise session, you should be at least above 6, um, and you should be for sure below 16. So above 16, um, your blood is more like syrup, it's really thick. Uh, you, that's the problem is you can't really feel it, but it is essentially doing damage to your arteries, as well as if it is above 16, it's kind of a sign that you don't have enough insulin in your blood. So exercise could actually further increase your blood sugars uh, because you don't have enough insulin floating around to be doing its job. Um, if you're below six, it's kind of like you just don't have enough fuel in the tank before uh, you're going on a long highway drive. So make sure you have uh, uh, some food nearby, some, some fuel if you need, that you're starting above six and that you have a testing kit nearby if you have symptoms. Now, time. So <clears throat> we're gonna talk about this a little bit later, but there's cardio and resistance training. So cardio, let's just say is walking, it could be biking or swimming or some type of like aerobic exercise. Basically, the longer you go, the more sugar you're gonna burn. So let's just say, I'm using examples, everybody is different, but let's say someone starts at a nine and they go for a 10, uh, 15 minute walk. Now they're at an eight. Let's say if they go for, I'm like, nope, that wasn't long enough. You go for another 15 minute walk. You're gonna be at a seven. Go for another 15, you'll be at a six. Go for another 15, you'll be at a five. So basically, the longer you go, 
the more sugar you're gonna burn, okay? Now you gotta keep this in mind if you've tested before, uh, before you went, it's also kind of good feedback for a person to understand, like this is the fuel you're using when you exercise. So if you wanna bring your sugars down, really exercise is the most natural way to do that. Go for a 10, 20, 30, 45 minute walk. Um, and basically the longer you go, the more sugars you're gonna burn off. This is at a low to moderate intensity. So at a low to moderate intensity, this is how your blood sugars will react typically, and everyone's a little bit different. Some people uh, burn blood sugar really easily. Some people uh, tend to burn fat more. It's different for everybody. So there's no one sweeping guideline. As for intensity, a low, low intensity walk would probably look a little bit more like this. You're not gonna burn sugar quite as quickly. Moderate intensity walks, so you're going a little bit faster. You're gonna burn uh, sugar like that. High intensity bouts of exercise have actually been shown to spike blood sugars. So this is kind of, kind of going back to our, uh, I guess, development as a species. When you are being chased by a lion or a tiger or whatever, um, your body needs quick fuel, so your body will release a bunch of blood sugar. So someone doing like a spin class or some kind of a high intensity workout might actually find that they have multiple spikes throughout their workout and that they might end at a 12. And they'll say, hey Kev, I did this workout and I didn't end uh, lower like you said I would, I ended higher. And it's basically every high intensity bout, your body um, could be dumping sugar into your blood, uh, thereby increasing your overall blood sugar, okay? So that kinda, that's gonna tie into intensity. So we covered time, the longer you go, the more you burn, at a low to moderate intensity. At a high intensity, you can actually increase your blood sugars. Now, this is you know bad on one side of things because you're like, well, I don't want higher sugars when I'm done. Um, however, high intensity exercise is very beneficial. You just need to be aware that don't expect the same same response. Um, really, what's going to happen after you finish your workout is high intensity workouts continue to burn for the next 24 hours. So the the higher intensity your workout the more you're gonna burn, we call it afterburn, uh, or EPOC, E-P-O-C is kind of the fancy acronym for it, um, but over the next 24 to 48 hours, your metabolism is gonna be burning more. So this will come back down, just kind of expect your, your immediately after exercise response to be a little higher. Most people, I think, fall into this category. Most people are doing spin classes and um, sprints and stuff like that, so for the most part, you won't have to worry about that. Um, one, one place where that can really benefit you, if you're out on a hike or you're caught somewhere and you're like starting to feel woozy, you have your testing kit, but you don't have a granola bar and you're like, where am I going to get one? I'm in the middle of the woods. Go for a quick sprint, like do something really quick jolty, um, or <laughs> quick jolty, but like, uh, fast acting, high intensity, go for a quick sprint. If I was caught. Uh, if I was with someone with diabetes and we didn't have anything for them to eat, that's what I would tell them to do because that has the best chance at actually increasing their blood sugar. Your body's got a lot stored. That's just the way to release it. So a high intensity bout could actually save your life. Type. So <clears throat> going into this cardio, um, so this is more walking, swimming, biking. That's kind of the expected thing. Um, uh, so as for cardio, what we recommend is 150 minutes per week is what you should be striving for in bouts of 10 minutes or longer. So 10 minutes at a time activates your aerobic energy making system. So you could do 15 bouts of 10 minute walks. You could do five bouts of 30 minute walks, three bouts of 50 minute walks, whatever, but target you should be shooting for about 150 minutes per week the other type of exercise you should be doing is uh, resistance training so resistance training includes uh, like dumbbells uh, body weight training could be machines uh, elastic bands anything like that the idea behind resistance training realistically what we're trying to do is rebuild muscle mass and rebuild strength 
as you get older, every year after about 45, 40 to 45 years old, you're going to lose between 0.5 and 1% of your muscle mass. So that doesn't sound, that's not a lot year to year, but over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, that could be 30% of your muscle mass. That's a very, very high or large amount. If you're not doing resistance training and you're losing all that muscle mass, that's when diabetes can develop. So oftentimes it'll show up in someone who's 50 or 60 or 70 years old and they are inactive. So if you're inactive and you're getting up there in age, um, essentially you're losing muscle mass and potentially gaining fat mass, that's gonna develop something called insulin resistance and the insulin that you do have just isn't doing its job anymore. So if we add in resistance training or strength training and rebuild some muscle, that's gonna make that insulin become more effective, and that's really how strength training helps manage your blood sugars, okay? So, what do we do for resistance training? We have some other videos uh, that you can see. There's a body weight training, uh, there's elastic weight training, there's dumbbells, there's a variety of equipment, there is uh, body weight only. You can, it doesn't really matter. You do any one of those, what you should be shooting for is with every exercise you should be doing at least six exercises probably i'll say six to eight is kind of my minimum number of exercises um, and then you should be doing somewhere between i would say about eight to 20 repetitions of each exercise so you can see our other videos it's going to give you a lot more education about how to do strength training but what i'm trying to get across here is when you do strength training it builds muscle and having more muscle is what helps manage your, your blood sugars over the long run. Um, what's cool about weight training, so you see how cardio kind of burns sugar the longer you walk. Uh, with weight training, your blood sugar quite likely will go up in the short term because it's kind of a version of high intensity exercise. And then over the next 24 to 48 hours, your sugars will actually be lower. So this span here, is one to two days and your sugar should be lower than baseline. The reason for that is, this is that afterburn I'm talking about, the reason for that is your body's trying to repair itself. If you just did a bunch of strength training and you're building muscle, over the next one to two days your body is rebuilding the muscle that you essentially tore during that workout. Um, so basically work out for 30 minutes and reap the benefits for 48 hours. That's kind of the idea why strength training is super beneficial for helping with blood sugar control. And if you can do that three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, then essentially your body is constantly rebuilding itself uh, and there's an, a, a blood sugar cost or an energy cost to doing that. And then you're going to be bigger and stronger. So that is the, the summary of what I want to get across with exercise and, and uh, uh, blood glucose management. Make sure that you have your kit, make sure you have some food, and then you start between six and 16. Low to moderate intensity exercise, the longer you go, the more you're gonna burn. If you get into the four to five region, it's time to have some food, you're in the danger zone. Um, low to moderate intensity, that's what it's gonna look like. High intensity, it'll go up. Cardio, you should be shooting for 100 at least. Realistically, the guidelines say 150 minutes per week of walking, biking, swimming, rowing, um, arm ergometer, any, any type of continuous movement, two days per week at least, ideally three, you should be doing some kind of strength training. If you do these things, you can either reduce your medication in the long run, uh, and it's just a way more natural uh, way to control your blood sugars. Uh, one of my favorite quotes uh, is, do what is hard and your life will be easy. Do what is easy and your life will be hard. So if you choose to do three workouts per week and this kind of stuff, we're only talking about a couple hours per week. If you choose that, then realistically the other 16 hours, 24 hours a day, 16 hours of your awake, 24 hours a day, um, your body's repairing itself and therefore you're gonna, your blood sugars are gonna be way better controlled. You just need to make room for about 30 minutes a day of some kind of physical activity, okay? Um, so feel free to check out our other videos, um, and that has been exercise and diabetes. Thanks for watching.